welcome to the Wire to Wire podcast. I got Jordy here with me. Welcome back, bro. Mike, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's going to be an uh, interesting episode. A lot's going on, man. So, you know, I'm repping my OVO for a reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on, man. Come on. I know what time it is. Of course, bro. Are, are you officially, are, have you signed to OVO or not yet? I'm working on it, man. Um, I'm talking with Oliver uh, and, and Chubb <laughs> and the guys. Uh, and uh, I think I'm still in that interview process. But um, in due time, man, in due time, I just need to get some more information on, on Kendrick. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that ends up. <laughs> and so this is a... So this is a great introduction to the topic that I really wanted to get in with you, right? So I don't even know where to start, really, because it's... We had to take like, our time, really and truly, because, like, you know, like, every day something something comes out. Who knows? In, it's true. In, in, in four hours, we might get the Kendrick reply, but you know what I mean? Like, it hasn't come yet, and I think the time is ticking for Mr. Uh, Morale, if we, if we, the, the small stepper whatever we like to call him. Um, but uh, right now, uh, it, it looks like Drake's in the lead. and uh, But again, we're, we're, we're still early. But I think we need to go back. We need to go back. There's so much to discuss in this whole beef. To be Agreed. Honest. So, I mean, for, I would say about over a decade now, right, they've kind of had their little differences firing different shots at each other, right? Mm-hmm. Little subliminal, like little subliminal jabs here and there. Yeah. But then, for whatever reason, you know, Mr. Big Stepper, mm-hmm. he decided on this Metro Boomin and Future project that he was just going to, like, officially just come out swinging, yeah. right, pause, and mm-hmm. really go at Drake. Yeah. And now we see Drake, he, he put out his drop and give me 50 reply, right? Mm-hmm. So you know what? What do you make of what do you make of all of this beef that's going on right now, and all these guys coming at Drake? Uh, I think it's it's interesting because I think Drake knew it was all about to happen. Like I feel a lot of this was premeditated because if you like, it made it forced me to listen back. When I listen back to her loss, there's a lot of things that went over my head. And when I even listened to For All the Dogs, there's a lot of things that went over my head because there was a lot of bars that were aimed that that were just, I guess, said that were I thought at the time were just like aimless. Or I guess they didn't know what which who they were directed at. But then later to find out, a lot of the things he was saying on these albums were premeditated to what was going to happen, right? In terms of like, one, telling time, telling signs were the features he had to use. What could, we're, we're used to always seeing feature, future on his album, Ross, you know what I mean? We usually see, or you might see just people that he usually works with, but we should have knew that something was brewing within those camps, right? We were even supposed to get um, What a Time to Be Alive too. Right, but then we don't get that, and then we see uh Drake and 21 come out with her loss, and then I guess that was really what did it right that cemented the, the beef per se in terms of Drake and Future. Right, um, I feel like Drake Future didn't like that whole thing of him doing because it kind of like downplayed what a time to be alive, you know what I mean, because. That was the first time you got that collaboration project uh, with two big artists, right? And then for Drake to do it again, and it's be, I would say, it might even be better than What a Time to Be Alive, right? It's just like, damn, so how does that make Future feel when we were supposed to do What a Time to Be Alive too? Well, I'm sure they had tracks that were not finished or not mastered, right? And then at the end of the day, there's that part of it, but there's also the women part of it as well, right? We we always saw, heard Drake talk about women or hint at women and stuff like that, and we didn't know who is it was directed to or who these women were connected to, but now it's all unraveling in front of our eyes, right? And I, I think it's just all fascinating, especially because 
the Drake and Jay Z song "Light It Up," where Jay Z predicted a lot of this, right? He said they're all gonna come back at you. They're all gonna, you know, they're all gonna want your spot. You're gonna be at the top, and then they're all gonna turn on you. And look who we now, look at it now, right? Twenty v one, right? Yeah. So, and I've been kind of like ever since this whole thing started, I've been going through Drake's catalog. And I've been going back and listening to some stuff, and it's almost like he was predicting this himself, right? So yeah. I do remember that Jay-Z verse when he was kind of, you know, warning him, like, oh, here's how they're going to come at you with silly rap beefs to try and distract you yeah. in disguise in the form of a favor, right? So I do remember him saying that on that track. And I was just listening to uh, that Drake song, you know, You in the Six. Um, if you're uh, Off of If You're Reading This, It's Too Late. Mm -hmm. And then the way he was kind of breaking down, like, I collaborate with a lot of these guys, but they hold a lot of the people I'm collaborating with hold a lot of resentment towards me. Mm. That was kind of the theme of what he was, you know, touching on in that song. Yeah. And then no friends in the industry off mm -hmm. of a certified lover boy. Yeah. Right. So my whole thing is, you know, it goes to show a how fake the music industry is. Yeah. Right. Which is a given, right. And it really goes to show that, you know, that 50 cent line that he said, I think was on patiently waiting when he's like, you mm -hmm. know, these, you know, these dudes in the industry aren't friends. They know how to pretend. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's re that really stood out to me. Yeah. That, wow. Like that's what Drake was living through. Right. Mm -hmm. And just some of these beefs, you know, I'm glad you brought up the future thing. Some of them, I just genuinely don't understand. Like the weekend in Drake, yeah. you and I, we did some, I would say some legendary, thorough breakdowns of that beat. Yeah, go right? back and listen to those episodes yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I'll probably even like put them in the end, like in the end description of this episode, because I think that's one of those videos that years from now people will watch and be like, yo, these guys, these guys were on the money with that one, right? Like mm -hmm. we really thoroughly broke that one down. So I knew about their history. Yeah. Right. But the future, the future one really surprised me. Yeah, because I always thought that you guys were cool, and then out of nowhere, this happens. Yeah, right. And then the whole thing with J. Cole, like we'll probably yeah. have to discuss that one too. Because for the past year and a half now, you know, that's kind of become like he became like Drake's new sidekick, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're doing tracks together, they're doing mm -hmm. tours together, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, you go at Kendrick, but then you want to apologize. Yeah. And Rick Ross too. Like we've always, like we've always discussed how the chemistry him and Rick Ross had when they when they were on tracks together mm -hmm. was incredible. So I don't understand now how all of, all of a sudden this comes out of nowhere. Like what do you like what do you make of all of this? Yeah, and I, I know what th I think is interesting, and I and why I think Drake will come up on top uh, at the end of all of this because I feel like Drake understood the fake love right um in the industry and him being an actor he knows how to put on a mask in different rooms right he knows how to be a chameleon without actually getting emotionally attached like i'm sure he built up great relationships with with future especially when they're in the studio but he always he kept like you know his his uh, it, close to his chest in terms of how much information and how close he is with them. You know what I mean? I feel like he never gave them their true self. So in terms of like when they're trying to like get at him and diss him or whatever the case may be, they don't know much information. And, and that later when we discuss the last response, that's what it seems like when you're just taking shots about him being a white boy or like, um, like his, his surgeries or whatever the case may be, like you don't have, actual information that could actually like ruin him you're just saying things and i think that's what it is at the end of the day it's like drake was in all these rooms and he played it perfectly in terms of like he knows what this is like you know he's gonna get the most out of it and he does it a lot like you know he's one of those artists that always hopped around to different hot artists right whether they were on the come up whether they were just um a hot artist like he always made sure to be like, I'm gonna get the most out of this, but you're gonna look at it as a favor. You know what I mean? 
Like, you know, like it was never like, oh, I need you. It was always you need Drake. And he's always he's always hinted at that, right? And it's always Drake Future and Drake. You know what I mean? He knew like he was a top dog. And the whole thing about this is future is is irrelevant in this beef. Drake knows that as well. But he's still gonna get at everyone that, you know, played the part in it. Metro is irrelevant in this as well. Cause he doesn't really care about Metro, you know, he's gonna troll Metro and because they all got together and they did they, they teamed up to Turner V one to go against Drake, but he doesn't matter. Drake is only concerned about Kendrick and the top spot. Mm-hmm. Everything else is just, you know, gonna build him up more because it's like, oh wow, he's taking on everyone, you know, and it's just like that's fine, but he, he's only focused on Kendrick. He wants Kendrick to come outside. He wants Kendrick to drop. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. Everyone else is irrelevant in this whole situation. But if you guys are going to come at him, it doesn't look good in the light because these are all artists that benefited highly from Drake. And and it doesn't look good on them. You know what I mean? Especially when it's people that just are just going to jump in. Like, The weekend, like... Like, there's no reason for him to just jump into this. You know what I mean? Like, like I understand, like, and we know, like, there's always going to be an internal beef between those two, right? Being from the same city, Screwface Capital here in Toronto, like, it's always going to be fake love. You know what I mean? And, like, again, they didn't, he didn't sign to OVO, so the, their history, their beef is going to go down in history, right? And it's going to last forever. So as much as they try to piece it up, it was never going to be, yeah, yeah, we piece it up, you know, brothers for life type shit. But it's always going to be like, I'm a, yeah, but whenever it's time for it to smoke you, I'm there. And that's what it was, right? You know what I mean? We can saw an opportunity, even though he mentioned that he, was, he wasn't he was doing any more features after he hopped on with No Diddy. <laughs> um, but uh, after, after No Diddy, but again, look at that. He's back with the boys, taking pictures, flicking it up, doing background vocals. So in the light, Weekend looks shaky and and funny and all this, right? And so does Cash, because Cash is in the video and the music video as well in the background, tricking on Playboy and and Travis Scott and everything. So all these guys just they look foolish. Like a lot of people should have stood out, should have not even hopped into this beef at all. You know what I mean? But that's why I like J. Cole, as much as he got killed for for apologizing at Dreamville. After after he dissed, he, he wanted to join. He did some reflection because J. Cole, he's a smart guy at the end of the day. You know what I mean? And he knows how smart Drake is as well. He'd been on tour with him for the second half of this tour. And he realized, like, this guy is calculated. This guy is a smart guy. And everything he does is with intent. So when he learned that, he's just like, yeah. Like, Drake never said it was the big three. Only J. Cole really said it was a big three. So Drake doesn't view this as as, as a, a, a triple threat match, right? He just sees it as a 1v1. Everyone else is just, you know, they're in the audience trying to watch and, and throw things in on the field. But Drake only sees one person in this whole thing. Everyone else that's jumping in, are, it's just phony at this point. But I just think that at the end of the day, since he is in the scope, on Kendrick, at Interscope, he's focused in on his target and he's locked in, and that's why he's going to end up at the top on top of this whole situation. And I don't think everyone is as calculated, as smart as Drake in this whole thing. At the end of the day, I would say this about Kendrick, right? I'm going to be honest; I don't really see what the hype is about him. I always personally found him to be overrated. This whole idea that he is somehow like this great lyricist and all that stuff, I personally don't see it, right? And to me, he's not a good song maker, mm-hmm. right? I'm sure people will disagree with me and say that's not true, but in my books, he's overrated, right? Yeah. So yeah. when people put him in this top five all-time conversation, like, get this guy out of here. He doesn't mm-hmm. belong in that conversation, Yeah. right? I just don't see it in him. I think it's really good marketing that's behind him. And... You know, you have to look at demographics, oh. right? So if you look at a lot of the people that like Kendrick, it's a lot of the, like the old school guys that love that old school hip hop energy. And I think 
the aesthetic of a Kendrick and, you know, his appearance and how he comes off, he gives you that, he gives that old school vibe to him. Like he has that old soul Yeah. Yeah, that he's like, I think. you know what I compare to? He's like 90s, 90s basketball. You know Yeah. what I mean? Those old timers, I say, you weren't there in the 90s. You didn't see Jordan and all them play. Like, you didn't know all this, how, how rough it was back in the day. But, like, no, we don't care about that. And that's Look what at the it modern is. game. <laughs> Yeah, I think he gives people that nostalgic, you know, that nostalgic Nas in the 90s kind of feel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But for me, the music just is not that quality to me. Like, I Yeah. like it's just not quality. And so I personally don't have him up there. So I think a lot of his hype Mm -hmm. is really something that people on the internet have just created for him, right? Yeah. So if I'm a guy like Drake who's been dominating, Yeah. it's a little bit offensive that you have a guy. Like, people say Drake's a plant and they use that. Really, I think Kendrick's more of, like, a plant, to be honest, right? So it's – so for me as Drake, if I'm Drake, I'm looking at, like, it's a little bit insulting to just go and put this guy on a higher level just because you guys have resentment for how long I've been running the game, right? Right. Because that's really got to live. It's just victory fatigue. They're tired of seeing the guy win. But I think if you break down all these guys that are coming at him, like, I'll exclude The weekend from this, to be honest, because I already know the history that they have, right? I don't believe that these guys will ever be, like, what they used to be. They're definitely never Never. going to collaborate again. Like, those days No. are just done. Like, Yeah. And I it's mean, they okay. never ever did, regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah. When was the last time they collaborated again? It never ever happened. Yeah, like 11 years ago. So it's never Yeah. going to happen again, right? So that one, I can kind of understand. And, you know, my philosophy when it comes to something like that is like when you have two people who know each other that don't get along, Yeah. just don't pick a side because That's what I'm saying. Yeah. in the end, they'll both just end up getting mad at a person, right? Yeah. So I don't really have any horse in that in that race. It's just two behemoths that don't get along. It is what it is, right? But in regards to future, he's another guy who I thought was always overrated, right? I never really, like, yeah, he had some good, like, hits, you know, like the mid-2010s, like 2015. You know, he went on, he had a pretty good two-year He had a great stretch. run, and then it was almost like peak when he collaborated with Drake. Yeah, but it, and That a was lot like of it was peak. repetitive, Yeah. right? I just like I just found his music to be very repetitive. You know, he's more to me. He's like a more like he's a grimy Nelly. You know what I mean? Mm. He's just a more edgy. He's an edgier version of Nelly, to be honest. Like in terms Right, of I see what you mean, and being able to do the rap and the R and yeah, B and and all and that. the and the melody and the melodies. Like to me, he's more of like a melodious rapper. So I kind of put him in that category of Nelly, but he's just a lot more like vulgar and graphic and edgy Yeah. than Nelly was, right? Mm hmm So, in a way, he kind of needed Drake. Mm Like, hmm he needed Drake for hits. He needed Drake to kind of to give him that longevity, right? They went on tour, multiple tours together. They did a Yeah. project together. But, Yeah. like, lyrically, what is Drake going to get from a guy like Future? Like, what bars is Future going to give that's going to Just give to get Drake women. fits? That's all Nothing. I meant. Just gonna get, But, just gonna get women and mix yeah, them. but for him, yeah, Kendrick is a target because for many years, you guys have been, you know, fabricating and putting this guy on my level. Yeah. So it's time for me to remind you guys and show you what it is, right? Like it almost kind of is like a LeBron and Jordan type of situation where people always Yep. push that, oh, LeBron's better than Jordan. Mm hmm So Jordan's like, yo, you know what? I'm going to hit you guys with this last dance. Mm hmm I'll give you guys Yeah, this yeah. docu-series to show you Yeah. guys why it's undisputed why I am that dude, right? So I think Right. now Drake, he, I don't think drop and give me 50. I think it's just the beginning, right? For sure. Yeah. I think he's just kind of throwing some jabs just to get this guy to respond back. Then he's going to see what level he comes at it with. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to come and hit him. Like he's going to come hit him with the nuclear track or maybe plural. Right. And I wouldn't even be surprised to be honest that that Kendrick track that came out, people are saying it's AI. Yeah. I wouldn't, I don't think it was AI. I think it was just a feeler track to see. Yeah. Well, I have a, I have a conspiracy theorist Okay. with, Hit me with with, it. Let's see. with all this AI stuff. So if we're looking back to last year, hip hop was almost dead, right? 
Like there was no one was really talking about hip hop. Is like if anything, the female rappers were carrying hip hop, right? So if we're looking at it at, at a business landscape into how we can bring back hip hop, right? The 50th anniversary just passed. Like it was slow for that. It really like they tried. They had uh award show after award show after award show saying 50th year in hip hop, blah 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 blah. But it wasn't really hidden. They had to bring all these old acts out and stuff like that. But like no one cared about all that. But like if we're looking at it from the business standpoint. And we're looking at whoever is Vince McMahon of the music music industry, right? And they're saying, how could we bring back this music hip hop? How can we do it? How can we bring back wrestling? Let's bring back The Rock. Let's bring back Undertaker, Stone Cold, the big guys, the big guns. Let's get them front and center. WrestleMania, right? And I feel like. With also with that and AI, so in terms of that, it's like okay, maybe they're all in a so the one conspiracy side of it is maybe they're all in the group chat, they're all you know, he ki 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 and ha ha ha. Look at these consumers, these podcasts, these streamers, eat it and it's all up. We're back, the numbers are up, you know what I mean. This is what they need, they need a big three, you know, they need a big three. Now, J. Cole being the woke one, of course. It's like he saw all this, like, oh, I don't want no parts, blah, 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 blah. But like a guy like Rick Ross, a hustler, of course he's going to drop a track right away. You know what I mean? What do you need him to do? Drop and give me 50? He's going to do it right away. You know what I mean? And and the conspiracy of Drake being in the industry plant, but he, he's the, the top dog in all this. He's going to have all the information. It's always going to flow through him. All right? So him being as... There in the in the civil war, they got the top guys here, all ready to go at each other. Everyone's all talking about this big three now a big two. We have Metro and Future, Travis, the Weekend, hopping on an album, doing music. Like this is the hottest rap has ever been. So maybe this conspiracy is it's all fabricated. You know what I mean? They're all like when I also see Ross and Drake going back and forth in the DMs. Like making all these jokes, sending all these memes and these pictures. I expect that from Ross and I expect that from Drake because they're both characters. Do I think it's actual beef on site beef for those two? I do not. I don't know at all. I just feel like it's it's a moment and they're going to live within the moment. And then two years later, we're going to get going bad when Meek and Drake had a track together. Down the road, I'm, do I think this is going to be a thing where it's almost like for that Jay's and Nas, e, Nas level where like they would never ever do a track together and they would always step on each other's music? Like Nas would always step on a Jay project and, and Jay would do the same? I don't think so. I feel like this is going to be a moment in hip hop. They are all probably all in this together, you know, and they're all going to benefit from it, right? So that's one part of my, my conspiracy theory, right? Because you never know. Business is business. Everything in the ent- entertainment is entertainment. The WWD is this world. That's one part. And now the AI component, right? We, we started to see more and more AI leaks here and there. You know what I mean? And the debate when the Drake came out was, is this real? Is this AI? And I found that interesting because it's like, hmm, if they can't tell the difference, if consumers can't tell the difference, if a project is, if a, if a track is AI or if it's the actual person, we might have something here, right? Where we could prompt AI with information, you know, and fabricate stuff and just keep this thing going forever and ever and ever. And, and who would know? If no one can really tell the difference between AI and real and what's real. And it's interesting that it came out as AI. It's like, oh no, this is AI. But then later it comes up like, no, this is actually the real track with the real lyrics, just some changes with a different beat. So, and then now late after this fact, we're getting people are rumorly saying it's it's Drake's camp that's leaking all these Kendrick. AI tracks, but like who's really doing all these AI tracks? Who's behind all these AI tracks? 
is it the music industry that's testing this AI product, right? Because why, why is it so, so almost detailed and so accurate? Where it's just like, huh, maybe this is a test that they're trying to roll out and we don't even know because we're distracted by the beef. We want the real songs. We want the real songs. We want the real music. You know what I mean? And when you're rolling out a product, you got to test it like anything else, right? So maybe this whole AI, is it real? Is it not? Is, is, is a test to see how the music industry can be sustainable with the way they go about music in the future. Yeah, I think you said a lot of uh, very detailed stuff there. So I'm going to try to break, like, break down what you said and like kind of respond point by point. I mean, I, I see validity to your theory in regards to all of this possibly just being fabricated. But at the same time, I think I want to, I guess the... the wake up, listen, the, wake the, up. The hip-hop <laughs> fan in me. We're in the, the Matrix, man. <laughs> the hip-hop fan in me, I think, kind of wants to believe that some of this is organic. And I think there are elements to it that are organic. Mm -hmm. Like, I think... In terms of Drake and Weekend, I think that's definitely organic. Yeah, 100%. And I think Drake and Kendrick, I do think that's also an organic tension that those guys just don't rock with each other like that. 100%. Right? Yeah. I think the future and the Rick Ross thing, I think that could just be trolling. Mm -hmm. Because with Rick Ross, like I just find it to be very interesting. This guy was beefing with Meek Mill when he was an MMG artist. Yeah. And he nowhere damn near found yeah. back, back, nowhere to be found. Yeah. And he damn near destroyed this guy's career, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, you didn't you didn't pick a side. Yep. Yeah. But now I find interesting that he sends a cease and desist letter to a French Montana. Yeah. That is your like that is the that is a line in the sand for you where you say, okay, this guy went too far. Yeah. Right. So that part is a little bit weird to me, right? In future. Right. Like, I think he's put out some project in the past couple of years. But to be honest, like, his stuff has kind of came and went. Mm -hmm. So he hasn't really been all that relevant to me. Like, in terms yeah. of the music landscape, I'm not really hearing about him or hearing from him too much, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, did he see a little window where he could kind of, like, you know, try to jump in and attach his name to something, right? But what keeps these guys all relevant? Only one person keeps these guys relevant. And that's Drake. When they try to do something on their own, per it se, comes and goes. Or they don't they don't try to aim for the for the, the crown, it comes and goes. And that's been hip hop for the longest time until we got to this point. Where think... it's 20, 20 people focused on Drake, <laughs> and now everyone's getting the relevance and things are the hottest that they could ever be. But I think it's the reason why I kind of think that there's some level of it being organic. It's just because even with like Drake and Metro, right? Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit shaky with them because I think he called out her loss when it came to something yeah, regarding her loss and then the whole the Grammy like, taking right? off his verse off the tra of trance. Yeah. So I think he had an issue. So I think they already kind of had a little something like, like brewing. Yeah. And then I think. Yeah, a guy like Future probably just said, yo, you know what? Let's just attach our name to this guy, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's then, above, above all of them. I'm saying, I feel like, who's the CEO of Universal? Is it Lucian or is it Drake? Well, it's Lucian. You know, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> who knows, man? Who's bringing in the bacon? <laughs> but do you think, but, but do you honestly think, because Drake doesn't need the relevance. It's these guys, right? Mm -hmm. So do you honestly think Drake would stoop himself to get involved in a beef just to uplift these guys' career when he could just be like, yo, let me collaborate with you guys? Is it good for Lucian? Is it good for Drake? Is it good for Universal? If he's victorious, yeah, it will be. It'll be great for them. And he will be victorious. Because he, he's an all-seeing eye. He's at the top, looking down. He's like, you know, he's like, he's like Dr. Evil and Mini-Me. But uh, Drake's Dr. Evil. <laughs> I mean, it very well could be true. All of this could just be some WWE script, right? But then I think because of the decline that hip-hop has been in, I they think they're it. like, yo, you know what? 
Why did, why did they why did WWE bring back The Rock? The guy's an actor, bro. Yeah, what's Drake? Yeah. He... <laughs> There's Drake. Hey man, hey man, I'm just trying to throw something out there, man. I don't know. I I'm crazy, low key, but you know. I mean, it's plausible. Like it's plausible only because like you know the timing of it is very strange because we know there is. There's a lot happening in the world, and there was a lot that was going on last weekend. We don't got to get into specifics, right? So I did find the timing of this to be very odd. Like, always a distraction. Yeah, why is this? Why are we hearing about this now? Distraction, get it? Like, yeah, come on, man. So, <laughs> I mean, there's definitely elements. There's definitely elements of truth to it, but for me, it was just kind of. It kind of just made me think. You know, because sometimes I like when stuff like this happens, you know, my mind just likes to go think about, you know, things from a context in regards to life. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it just goes to show that, you know, a lot of people, they can hide their tension behind handshakes. Right. Yeah. And people are not always comfortable playing second fiddle for too long. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, if you look, for example, like Jordan and Scottie Pippen, they were mm -hmm. teammates that had all this success together. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing Scottie Pippen's true colors, right? Right. So all these guys that were, you know, friends with Drake, you know, if this beef is an organic thing, all this tension that they were, like, that they were bottling up towards him that now they feel comfortable, you know, coming out with because it's a group of them that all feel and think the same way. Right. So just it, it, that part was very interesting to me how how quickly people can switch up, bro. Yeah, yeah, and I, this and again, it, it just makes me curious as well, right? Because it's like for it to be such a quick switch up, like Ross and Drake were the best of friends. There's there's been videos where they would compliment each other, and then for it to be switching up just like that because of uh, well, the Ross and Drake beef again, like you said, a French. French Montana's Drake's Splash Brother is the reason why. Like, that just doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. So that one being a beef, that, like, doesn't make any sense. But Metro's beef with Drake, like, is very weak. Mm -hmm. Future's beef with Drake, like, there's nothing there either. Really and truly. A woman? Okay, sure. How many women have you guys shared in your life? But, like, you guys okay. are Eskimos bowls with uh, probably 20, 100 women. And you see, bro, I'm glad you said that because it's kind of... Is something that I wanted to discuss. So the last episode that I did, I was basically talking about, you know, how 50 Cent was trolling Diddy. Uh -huh. And one of the reasons why he was going so hard at him is because, you know, he's dealing with his baby, his ex-baby, his baby mother, Daphne. his ex-girl, right? Daphne. The little sex worker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, and I always find it to be very weird that these, that these guys are celebrities. They can... They have access to a ton of different women around the world, right? Mm -hmm. But they always choose to deal with the same rotation of women. Yeah. And I always found that to be very odd. But another thing that I find to be odd, too, is that sometimes guys, they only want to deal with a particular girl because they dealt with that specific guy. And, they, they, think it's a, yeah. and they think it's a way of, like, you know, dominating or winning. Mm -hmm. If I get if I deal with the girl that this person used to have, yeah, what would Pluto do? Yeah, so it's very strange. So I'm like, I don't know if it's Drake is the one that's messing with these people's ex girls or girls like, that they yeah, used to deal with. Fact, yeah, 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 or if it's them that are doing it to him, mm -hmm. right? Because I know with like you know Bella Hadid, mm -hmm. who. I don't know whether or not they were dating or anything. There were yeah. certainly rumors of it. This I mean, you could throw any any woman at this point, really and truly. Like, I'm sure there's some type of connection here and there that they've all had. But yeah, but you're it, right. You know, but it's, I mean? like, it's the same type of thing in terms of, and then it's all about pillow talking. So, you know, it might drink. be Drake after the fact, and then the pillow talk. Like, it's probably starts with future, goes to Drake, goes back to future, goes back to Drake, then the pillow talking ensues. And then information gets leaked out, and then here we are. But there has to be a man code, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like if no, some these guys, man, you guys are but, sex addicts, <laughs> and that's the problem, right? And it, it just goes to show in life, like you cannot, 
give in to your desires because especially when it comes to like matters such as dealing with women bro like Mm -hmm. that can literally destroy empires you know what Yeah. i Right. mean dealing with certain kind of women can destroy empires it can destroy lives right Mm -hmm. so Or it can lead to the best music that we've had in like a few years, you know what I mean? So salute, kudos to the women out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i don't know some things are not worth it because let's just say this stuff is organic right because i know when drake had his beefs prior you know because it was around the time that he was working on views and Yeah. he Mm was hmm Yeah, saying that's when he was like the angriest. Yeah. yeah and he was saying at that period of time he became into a person he didn't know that he felt that it was really draining and taking away from him and Mm he didn't like being in that space right hmm Yeah. so I mean, you're almost 10 years removed from that incident. It's been about nine years. Mm hmm and you're finding yourself in a similar situation again. Right. Yeah. So at what point do you say that some of this, I have to take accountability for some of this is my own doing. Yeah, I think I think that Drake is gone. That like that Drake where like he was conscious of I guess bro code or like feelings or doing the right things or morals, that's gone. I think what we have here now that it's not a fault of his own. It's the betrayal, how people did him dirty, what he's been through, the whole situation with Kanye, the whole uh the whole rollout of his kid, that whole situation. Like he's emotionless, you know, as 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 he mentioned on that on Scorpion, right? So I think he's he's just demon mode at this point. Like that's But why this is the scariest Drake. Because like they I don't think they're coming back for from old, yeah, he he, you know, take care, Drake. That's that's no more. you dig so, huh? Yeah, I think and, and we you 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 should see it on for all the dogs. Like that type of dark energy, that type of like just like 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 egotistical getting at very um spiteful petty you know what i mean like it, it makes for great music and like i and and i i like i can't hate him for that like the music is great the result of it is great music but like i feel like spiritually he's 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 gone sad to see but like you know what i mean i think spiritually he's just he's just in a dark place but i know like but the music's gonna do that to him you know what i mean as well because he has to tap into that unfortunately like when he gets away from the music as he was supposed to, but Lucian and Drake had a master plan to to revive hip hop. So he wasn't able to retire as he wanted to. And maybe that, that stomach bug that he had, it was him being sick of these niggas. So, <laughs> so, so really and truly he was, I think that was all just a facade. He was probably never going to take time away, but when that time does, hopefully he does get time, away after he's done this amazing tour you know, how, how many days it was right like when he gets away from that from all this energy and energy and can just be with his kid and like be a family man be a father maybe that that drake comes back right maybe we get 444 drake down the road but right now we're we're seeing a a, a man that's in a dark place don't don't let the demon out but he's good about the, he's about to bring the demon out man i'm gonna love it but I, I wish I wish the best for him, of course. I, I'm sure he'll fare well in, in terms of battle. But uh mentally, the mental toll, the 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 physical toll, I don't know what that, that will do for him. Like, the way I'm seeing it, I think that it is something that was kind of brewing. But then I kind of think that they're like, okay, you know what? Hip-hop needs this anyway, so here's the green light. You can go ahead and then you can you can respond. Like You, you can actually engage in this beef, right? But I think, I think it was, I'm going to give it a benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say that I think there was an element of it being organic. And there was like kind of an organic element to it, but then they kind of got the green light to go respond. Here's how I'm going to be able to test and validate either of our theories, right? Yeah. If Kendrick responds, right? right that's a big if. If he does, the level of, I guess, the level of viciousness that he approaches his track with, that's going to tell me whether or not that this is actually something serious because... No, I think I've heard, I think it was on like Joe Budden, like I've seen Yeah. like people kind of talking about it, saying that it's very lyrical Mm-hmm. and that 
you know, he definitely goes hard at him. So if he comes at him with a certain level of viciousness, like he's looking to kill, then I'm going to say that, you know what, there's probably, I think that this is something organic, right? Okay. But if it's anything like that so-called AI track that leaked where he's kind of like just, Well, he's not Kendrick's really saying AI, anything. Kendrick's AI track, that leak? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So He if was it's anything, actually garbage. yeah, so if it's anything like that, then I'm going to say that, yeah, this is probably just all for like, this is just all a, a distraction. It's just for internet clicks and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm But a part of me does think that, you know what, I think they've been talking around each other for so long. And it's like, yo, you know what, let's just go, like, just let it go. Right. And we have we have this hip hop civil war that's brewing right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, all I'm saying is I seen Marvel. You know what I mean? And I mm -hmm. and I saw the references and, and I, I seen the writing, right? Mm -hmm. And the writing's on the wall. And we have Thanos here mm -hmm. and Jersey Drake. So that being said, you know, it's a great it's a great script. It's a great movie. I'm Yeah. enjoying it. I, I like I enjoy being a pawn, being able to talk about, discuss it, you know, and as well being a consumer as well. So I can't complain, but you know. I think I'm just too woke to to Oh, be, to, to get blindfolded, you know. I That's mean, it. like I said, there's certainly elements. I mean, I can certainly see that there that very well could be the case, right? But I just want to kind of look at this as just someone who's uh, someone who just enjoys the music, you know. Yeah, same, same, same too. Like, Like again, I, I I'm still gonna you know act like this is real in the moment. mm You -hmm. know what I mean? So it is what it is. But I still have to open. the eyes to others, you know, so they're aware. Yeah, You know, but see, that's why, like, even, too, I'm not, especially with the whole weekend thing, that's why I'm not really here trying to pick a side and saying, yo, this, this, like, I'm, I'm team X or team Ovi. I'm not, like, at the end of the day, there's probably people from EXO that watch this podcast. Who knows? I don't know. Right? Yo, no But, beef. <laughs> but uh, for me, the way I look at it is, like, those guys, they have their own history. So this, to me, is just... Two guys with egos just going back and forth. It is what it is, right? Yeah. But the other stuff, I think, makes it kind of interesting, especially him and Kendrick, because all we ever hear is Kendrick is, you know, one of the greatest. He's the best artist of this generation. But now it's like, no more talking. Just put the music out, and then let's see for ourselves what will happen. But where do we go after this? Because this is this is like this is like the the you know end game. You know what I mean? After end game, Marvel's been shaky ever, ever since. So I mean, after they have this big civil war, Infinity, uh, Infinity Wars, whatever the case may be, Infinity Stones, whatever that movie is called, to the end game, like what happens after next after this? You know what I mean? Like. Well, I mean, I think it's going to be the inevitable, right? I think eventually what's going to happen is everyone's going to kind of go back to their respective camps, right? And everyone's career is going to trend in the direction that it was going into. Like, to me, like I said, I always, I thought Future was on the downside of his career. Maybe this will kind of give him a little bit of a little Well, uptick. I think, well, well, of And then course, he's going to go back down well, anyway. of course, <laughs> and he's going to go like, it's funny enough, I'm not wearing my OVO fresh shirt. As we see, they announced August 11th that they'll have their, their tour date in Toronto, right? So that even feeds into the whole narrative, you know, with everything. But like, who knows what that does? But again, with this, like, that will make, that will ensure that that concert sells out. Regardless, because like if they didn't have this whole Drake beef to feed off, what that does that album get created? We don't trust you. We still don't trust you. Two albums just off of fabricated beef with Drake. Off of what was the beef stemming from? From Metro and Future standpoint? Not not much really. There's nothing. Right? So it's like But what is look what it's resulting in? You know what I mean? When it's just beef that's solely supposed to be in between Kendrick and and Drake, where it could have been a, a track that Kendrick dropped. Kendrick could have dropped like that, directed at Drake. You know what I mean? But no, it had to come on this project that Metro and Future are gonna benefit from. Ross could be on the project. Weekend's gonna be on the on the on the project as well. 
this benefits everyone in in this whole in this whole battle, right? And builds up everyone's relevance to to now. What are they going to do next from this? Now are they going to continue to go at Drake because they know what it does in terms of building up their career and building up their relevancy in this whole thing? Or I think they... I think a lot of these guys are going to squash it. Like I think I think future. I think Future and Rick Ross will eventually. So now when we look back on this video, like whatever the case is, five mm -hmm. years, ten years from now, it's going to be like, oh, okay. So it was just a moment. You yeah, know? like I think one day we'll we'll go on Instagram and then we'll see a video like of them a club live on a stage together. <laughs> and, you know, Dre comes out on stage yeah, you see is seen hanging out with Future, or you yeah. seen hanging out with Rick Ross. They put their differences aside, and Drake will probably say something along the lines of, oh. "At the end of the day, this guy's my brother. Sometimes families fight, yeah. but that's just what families do." Yeah, they fight, they yeah exactly. Maybe, together, maybe right? them being they're having their their concert on their August eleventh. Maybe it'll be part of OBO Fest, and it's gonna be a whole theatrical play. <laughs> I mean, I think it's going to take time. Civil War. I think it's going to take a little bit of time. I, I I don't think, I mean, it's plausible, but I doubt it. I think we'll probably have to give it a couple of years before it gets to, it gets to a point where I'm saying that it'll get to, because if this is a facade, mm -hmm. they still have to somewhat keep up the appearance that they don't get along, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah. So well, it's going to be, everyone's going to be like, this is bullshit. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So they have to kind of keep up the appearance, but I think eventually, like I said, everyone's gonna go to their respective camps, yeah. right? Everyone's career is gonna go the way it was meant to, anyways, right? So, yeah. for example, future he'll have his little run here, and then I think he's gonna go back to being on his decline. Mm -hmm. Rick Ross will be doing whatever it is that Rick Ross does, mm -hmm. right? Open up wing, wing stops and stuff. Yeah, and then you know Metro Boomin will continue to make will continue to make and some do, drums. Make some drums. So, yeah. 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 So, like, everyone is going to be doing what they're supposed to do anyways, but this just allowed for them to kind of create a collective moment, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to kind of buy in to your theory a little bit. Yeah. So, I think this is just kind of a, a little pit stop before the inevitable of where things yeah. are going to go, right? But I think with a guy like Drake, I think why he, he gets met with a lot of resentment mm -hmm. is because he doesn't really give himself time away from the spotlight yeah you know what i mean like the weekend i'll give you an example but he can't though but this is like this was supposed to be a year where drake was supposed to be finishing up his tour and then it's just like a a we we're supposed to see hip-hop without drake involved and what it's showing me is that's just not possible possible like he has to be involved or it's just not going to go the way it's supposed to go that's what I really feel like. Like a, a Drake can't take two years off or a, a full year off. It'd be a terrible year for for music, I guarantee. Yeah, then that's something they gotta figure out because right now the crop of talent. Well, they figured it out with this whole civil war. Lucian and Drake, they sat down. They put they put a vision board on the wall. And they said, <laughs> "How many men should come at me? Twenty. All right, here we go." And here we are. And and my final point on this and my theory with this is I think it's telling that J. Cole bowed out because he is releasing an album called The Fall Off. And what is falling off? I don't think he's falling off. I think the industry is going to fall off after this as their last, you know, hurrah. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, it was just kind of crazy to kind of think about in hindsight that Right now, two guys in their late 30s are carrying an entire industry, right? Yeah. But in terms of J. Cole, like, I think just for the competitive spirit, you should have just kept a track up. Like, there was no need to go back and retract your statement. And it was funny He's because... Woke. That's the problem. And it's funny that you say that because I remember there was a time when people were like, oh, we're going to get this collaborative album from him and, like, Kendrick, Kendrick you know, yeah. they're... They're cooking something up. But we've been hearing about this for like over a decade now, right? And then to kind of see where their trajectory is. I always thought that these guys were friends, mm -hmm. right? So then for him to take well, his I didn't really know, to be honest. I always thought, like, Jake Cole and Kendrick, like, I was like, 
thought they were similar in terms of the the way they make music per se or the music they put out like as that woke you know introspective music so it's like they it would make sense for them to collab you know what i mean because they make similar types of styles of music but i never really thought that they had any anything of a relationship or anything really like where they would hang out whatever the case may be and that's why like for j cole to come out kendrick he didn't have much to say mm -hmm. that's why he couldn't really continue on the beef that's why you might as well just cut it short or cut it cut his wishes while he can and just go back to his normal life because like there's nothing there really and truly yeah but the way it looked it looked very weak though it looks like oh 100 it looks 100%. like you came Especially because he, he's been on going on this feature run where he's just been going crazy on everyone's track and saying oh he's damn for someone to call him out to get at him someone calls him out he's like oh he goes back and he's like no what? never mind yeah, it's kind of weak. It's like, yeah, you're going, like, you go at this guy and then you go on stage, right? And then you go and apologize and then say, okay, I'm going to bow out. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this that diss track that I did was whack. And it's like, bro, at some point, you know what it's I mean? Just, yeah, like, just for, the, just for the competitive spirit of it, just go at the guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then from the optics of it, too, it looks like, A, it looks like you're kind of, placing Kendrick on a hierarchy that he's the top guy that you're afraid to go at. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I think number two, it looks like you're kind of leaving Drake on the Island that, yo, he has to go and deal with all these. He has to go and deal with this guy by himself. You know what yeah. I mean? Which yeah, I think Drake is, he's fine with that to be honest. But... And I think he's more than capable of being able to hold his own. And I think this is one of those things where it's going to enhance his legacy that, you know, all these guys came at me and I won. Right. Yeah. It kind of reminds me, of like 50 in a way, right? So 50, I remember at his peak when he was beef with probably half a hip hop. Yeah, like, yeah. Obviously, we know about like Ja Rule and Murder Inc. Mm -hmm. But then he had a beef with like Jada Kiss, mm -hmm. right? Fat Joe, the game. Kanye, you know? <laughs> Kanye, Kanye just Kanye? more so like just selling. That was just like a competitive, you know, oh, selling yeah, for, for, on the yeah, same um, day. Yeah, yeah. But like in terms of actual beef, he had... Like, it was a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember it was the 2007 BET Awards, and then he was performing. Mm -hmm. And then literally, he was walking around. Like, he came off the stage, and he started walking in between, like, where people were seated. Mm -hmm. And he was just checking, the, like, he was just checking the room's temperature. Like, all these people yeah. have a problem with me. Let's see who's going to do something. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I think it's going to kind of give Drake, if he comes out victorious, yeah, and I, it's interesting because he is referencing himself to 50, right? Yeah. Well, 50 was the blueprint, right? Like, he kind of yeah. laid the foundation to show what a moment was and how he was able to kind of, like, extend his moment. A lot of it was through beef. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think it got to a point where the beef was happening too often. And then I think the industry was moving away from like a 50 cent sound to more of a Kanye sound too. Mm -hmm. So I think there was just like a, a shift where eventually that model, it didn't work as much, but. Yeah. And then we had to get AO technology from 50 and JT. Yeah. <laughs> Although I will say, I thought Curtis was a great album. Uh, like, uh, uh, yeah. You know, I was, I, th <laughs> I thought it was a great album personally. Yeah. Right. I just think that, there was a lot of behind the scenes politics that was going on. We'll, we mm -hmm. could probably do that in a completely different episode, break that one mm -hmm. down. But yeah, this was, uh, at least it's welcoming. You know, it was good to see that competitive spirit, you know, back in hip hop again, you know. For sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah, man. Like, again, like, you know, like I said, like, like we mentioned at the top of the episode, it was going to be a, a good one, right? There's a lot to, to, to delve into with this one. And, uh, I look forward to what happens next, right? Maybe we get something else that comes from Kendrick. And then we get uh, some more music from Drake as well. So, again, as the consumers, you know, we benefit the most. At the end yeah. Of the enjoy enjoy it while you can, you know. Cause... That's what I'm trying to say, man. The fall off is near. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I'm a little bit... Uh... I kind of look at uh, Cole a little bit sideways now. So, we'll see. I don't know. Just That, that move was just funny to me. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he just removed himself from any. It'll go down in history, and everyone will remember it, because uh, this moment is going to be that big. 
and then they'll mm-hmm. remember J. Cole's part in this moment of being in it and then bowing out. So when it comes to conversation of J. Cole being a top five artist of all time or whatever the case may be, or people listing off the top five, he'll automatically be removed. Yeah, and I got to say this, you know, because this just came to my mind now. So this is something that I got to say before the episode is up. If you're a dude and you're thinking about getting, you know, any form of, you know, cosmetic surgery, whatever it might be, you want to get a BBL on your stomach or you want to do something with your nose. I'm not going to say not to do it. You know, do whatever it is that you want to do, but just don't let anyone know that you're doing it (laughs) because as a man, it's always something that's going to be viewed as different, weird, and it's definitely going to be held against you. And this is why, bro, I was very adamant that I didn't like when Drake was painting his fingernails because now it's a very easy target for anyone to get at you. And I'm surprised no one went there with him yet. But you right? can't in this in the, in this in this landscape that we live in. It's very it's very sensitive. Careful. You don't yeah. want to attack you Tyler Creator and then uh and uh Jared Carl Michael. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> don't no don't, don't even get me started. Whatever on you that. Want. But yeah, definitely don't if you're gonna if you're a guy and you're thinking about getting cosmetic work done, yeah, I'm not gonna knock you, I'm not gonna shame you. Do what you gotta do. Just don't publicize it. Don't document it, don't show it. Just do it under wraps because it will get held against you. It absolutely will. It's just, there's a certain stigma when men do it, it's a problem. So don't publicize it. Yeah, do what you got to do, man. It's a crazy world we live in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this was, uh, Jordan, it was great having you on, bro. This was definitely a fun episode. When this stuff was brewing, I'm like, Yo, we got to we gotta run an episode yeah. and get this in. For sure, for sure. And we, and we still got to do another uh, episode, talking some basketball, you know. Yeah, yeah, those ones. Here. Yeah, those yeah. ones are coming. Like, cause I just want this this playing crap to be over. <laughs> like, yeah, respect Adam Silver, man. He has a great restaurant in Toronto. Oh, NBA yeah? courtside, check it out. <laughs> Is that actually owned by the NBA, though, or are they just uh, licensing the name? Ah, uh, see, you and I are getting into more conspiracy theories, and we don't yeah. have enough time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think even next week, you know, the scheduling and time permits, we should definitely. Uh-huh. Uh, Talk playoffs. I just want this playing to be over with. I want the actual yeah, seeding and, and LeBron to be, to be over with real quick too. Because joking about the send him packing for as he should, as he should, bro. You know, like honestly, at this point, the guy should just retire. I think Chris Paul should definitely retire. Oh yeah, yeah, he should pack it up with Blake. Him and Blake, yeah. Michael, fuck it. Like, bro, just retire. Like, we'll sit down somewhere and like touch grass, bro. Like, you know, it's time. <laughs> you think? I think LeBron's getting to that point. You know, but I think, you know, I think that I, I think Jokic will definitely uh, add some extra grease in his beard and make him realize like, yo, like <laughs> I'm done. You know, the game has passed me by. Yeah. Yeah. But what? Yeah. Once the seating has been finalized, then mm-hmm. I think, yeah, well, next week we should jump on an episode and uh, yeah, I'm down. discuss hoops. Some predictions and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But Jordan, always yeah. a great time having you on, bro. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. This is a good one.